So this time what we're going to do is look at one of the most useful uh, commands that I've come across, which is get model output. Basically, um, most of your modeling is probably done within uh, Nexus or Bodybuilder. Once you have a model trial open in Nexus, you can take those model outputs from Nexus and bring them really easily and efficiently into MATLAB for further processing. So for me, I might take uh, my custom model outputs and bring them into MATLAB. I would probably then split them into, so maybe you've got your ankle angle, which I might split into um, like stride, swing and stance phases. I might then go and time normalize that data and extract some key parameters from it. So. And uh, that's kind of, this is going to be a short version of that. All we're going to do today is um, grab the model output data for the right ankle angle, the right ankle moment, and the right ankle power. Um, and then we're going to, once that's been brought in, we're going to bring in the events for the right limb. So we've got right foot strike and foot off. Um, and then we're going to crop that um, above um, data. We're going to crop that into stance phases. So the same trial here is open in Nexus. This is our running trial from the first and second videos. And I'm plotting the right ankle moment on the graph there. And if I just go in and show you, this is where all those model outputs um, are stored. So I have my angles, my moments, and my powers are the three that I'm interested in today. So then I'm going to come back into my um, MATLAB interface now and you can see like before I've got my editor here with a pre-written script which I'll put in the description box and then I also have the command window which I'm going to run through with the um, command step by step. So like we did in the first video we're going to start with that linking statement the Vicon equals Vicon Nexus and once again, I'll stress, it's got to be written as it is um, for this connection to occur. You've also got to have like a connection to the internet as well. Um, so that's something to bear in mind if you're having problems. And then we're going to get the subject name. So after running both of these, you can see in my workspace now, I have Bicon has appeared and we have the subject name. And again, John Smith is sitting in here. Now, what I've done is listed the model outputs and if I run this little bit of code here you can see that this is actually just going to store the names only of the model outputs and this is just going to help me further on down the track when I'm trying to make a loop to bring in these uh, model output signals um, really efficiently. So obviously you can see that they're just stored here in a cell array and there's three cells with three names. Okay. So then what I've done is I'm going to cycle through. Oh, just one more comment on that as well. Um, so you've got the right ankle angle. I wrote this exactly as it appears in my um, model outputs in Nexus. So these are all consistent. So look at this one here, for example, our ankle moments, plural there. Um, and it's got the R, A and M capitalized, so I just need to make sure that that's consistent. You can see here that it is consistent. Um, so that's me setting up the model output names. And then I built this loop, so it's a for loop. And basically, um, you know, if, if you're new to MATLAB, that might seem a little bit too complex. But I really encourage you to get into using loops. Um, and I'll just explain a little bit more about this one. Um, so we're using the vicon.getModelOutput command. And so with that, um, if I had used my display command help for this command, I would have seen that I need to input the subject name as the first input. And I also need the model output name. And this is similar to the get trajectory um, example in the second video in which you just simply list the name of the model output. Now, I'm going to have also two outputs here. 
um, you've got your modeled out, modeled data, so the model output comes out, and you've got x, y, and z. So that's here. That's what I've set up here. And then the second one I've set up here is an exists um, array that Nexus is also going to give me. So that's whether data exists in that frame or not. So we covered that also in the previous video. So I won't talk too much about the exists array, but how this loop is going to work is um, every time the loop is cycled through, I increases um, by a step of one. So the first time this loop happens, um, I is going to equal one, and it's going to go all the way through to the length of model output. So what is the length of the model output? Well, it's three. If I want to check that, I can obviously just take that one line down here and run it, and you can see that, of course, yes, it's three. So for i equals one to three, essentially. So the first time round, i equals one, second time round, i equals two, and third time round, i equals three. And so here we have a structure that I've set up. So when you um, have a little dot here, that's going to enter a new level of the structure. So my first level is model data, dot, so second level is going to be raw, dot, and then it's going to be the name of model output i. So in the first instance, that will be right ankle angle. And then we're going to have the same here. So we're going to add to the model data structure with another um, another one here at the second level. So firstly, we had raw, and now we've got exists. And then we've got our model output name as well. Um, and then obviously coming down here, um, when you see an I here, it means that the model output name that you're bringing um, as an input here will be whichever, um, we, wherever we are at in terms of iteration. So if it's one, if I is one, it will be here. If I is two, it will be the moments. If I is three, it will be the power. So what I'm going to do now is just run through this little block of code and I'll just check it out in my workspace and show you what that looks like. Don't worry if that's overly complicated. I mean, you can use the get model output command very simply and um, copying and pasting it multiple times. And I'm sure you'll work out how to do that off of this. I just wanted to show a for loop as well. So we go into model output, oh sorry, model data. And like I told you, I've created two level, two um, new levels here. So we've got raw and exists. And if you go into raw, you've got, like I said, there would be, you've got your three variable names. And if we even go into them now, you can see the data is here. So let's take a moment to plot this. And we can just check that it's all good. Uh, There you go. So here what we're looking at is the first um, x data here. So we're looking, it gets up to approximately like 250. So you can see that there are in fact um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 contacts there. So I'm going to close that now, and I'll just show you quickly that the exist data came in in the same fashion. So if I open that up, you can see I have three logical arrays here. I open up one of them, and you can see it's just a bunch of zeros and ones. So I'm going to close that down. Okay, so next thing that we're going to do is bring in the events, and to do that, we've got the Vicon dot get events command and your inputs that you require are the subject name which we've stored previously and then you also need um, whether it's right left or general and so this part here the second entry is going to correspond to these three here so you've got left you've got right and you've got general and um, so where the event is located and then this one is going to be well what type of event is it so obviously you've got your three types, you've got your foot strike, foot off, and you've also got the um, general event as well. And it's again very specific. You have to write and um, capitalize the F and the S, and obviously there has to be that gap. And um, so it just is how you see it in Nexus. 
Um, so now if I run those, I, on, as you can see again, I've created a structure, so we, so we should expect a structure output. So I'm just running those two lines of text there, and we come in here, and we've got a new structure event. Within that, we've got another level here. We've got um, the right foot strike event and the right foot off event. So if I click on one of those, you can see um, the frames where the foot strike events occur. Okay, so just closing that again. And now the last thing that I've got set up here is um, a for loop to begin with. So we're going through those three model outputs again. Um, and then within that, once we start within a model output, we're going to cycle through and um, determine each individual stance phase. So this is purely MATLAB processing. In this little bit, I just wanted to wrap it up with. Um, we don't actually extract any information from Nexus. So we're just using um, the data that we already brought in. So we're taking our raw data um, for the model output that we're up to um, in terms of the I iterations. And then we are cropping it according to the so we're going to take all the rows because remember the structure that this data was brought into because we didn't manipulate it, we just took it in as you see it. So if I go back into the model data, you can see that the raw data for um, any of these is brought in in rows. So we've got the X row, the Y row and the Z row. So we've got, we're taking um, all the rows but we're taking the specific columns that are between the events of foot strike and toe off. Oh, sorry, foot off. And so that is going to essentially then crop that data according to the columns that represent the frames that foot off, uh, foot strike and foot off occur. So we're going between foot strike and foot off because obviously that's our contact stance phase that we're interested in. Um, and then a little note on that. So we're actually cycling through um, all our stance phases. So to the length of our stance phases. So we just copy this down here. You can check what that is. So this is just another step in automation. So we're going through six contacts today. So um, this loop here is just going to run through and um, every time we get to the end it just adds one um, until it gets to the sixth contact and then it's processed them all. So if I just run this and I mean again if this is too complicated don't worry about it it's still like the code will be available so you can start to pick it apart and um, try to break it down into a more simpler version um, if you like and so Running that and going into my workspace now, we're going model data again. And this time now I have a crop data. And if I go into my moments, you can see here I've got stand space one, stand space two, stand space three, four, five, six. And if you look, they're all slightly varying lengths, but they're around about the same because you'd expect some consistency in, in this because it's just a running trial. And then let me open one of these and you can see now that I have brought this in in a different way than you saw the raw data. So instead of it being three rows, um, now I have three columns of data, but that's still X, Y and Z. But if I come in here, you can see that we have transposed um, that data and that's why it's coming in this way. So again, now you can just take the opportunity to plot that. And you can see that this is one of the six stance phases for the right ankle moment. So that's all I wanted to cover in this video. In the next one, I will look at um, analog signals and bringing them into um, MATLAB.